Hello, folks. Oh, my goodness, I am late. And I always talk about being, being on time. God bless you. This is Pastor Nobles. We're coming to you uh, on this beautiful Wednesday night. Listen, I pray that your day went well and wherever and wherever you watch this video, I pray that you are experiencing the presence, the power, protection, and the provision of the Lord in your life. Hey, listen, just want to do a quick Q&A. Come on, join us. Join us for some Q&A. Would you like to learn to play worship Jesse, piano? Just in case y'all don't know. That's a uh, question and answer session. Hey, y'all, it's, it's after Bible study. Those of you that's coming from Bible study, thank you for joining us. Uh, and I got my cup here, Pastor B, from my cousin, April Stokes. And I'm drinking my tea. So come on, join us. And let's say what type of questions y'all have. Let's see. Anybody got a good question? Just want to spend some time in Q&A. You know, I love Bible study. I love answering questions. And I love hearing what, what the saints are thinking about. Y'all greet us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Say hello, wave at us. We're going to wait for some individuals to come on. Lord, this has been a good day. The sun was shining in uh, in Moultrie, Georgia. I don't know where you were, but the sun was definitely shining in Moultrie, Georgia. And so, just want to come on and just, just want to do some Q&A. Q&A time, question and answer time. So, if you have a question, a, a good question uh, that... Uh, that you was asking, what, what does the Bible have to say about this? Or if you experience something that you're saying, you know what? Uh, I read this in the Bible and uh, I'm going through this. What does the Bible have to say about that? Want to do some Q&A as you come on. Uh, greet us. Let us know where you're coming from. Uh, Y'all say hello. Hello, mom. Hello, Dad. Y'all, come on, come on. We just want to do some Q&A. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. No question is too dumb. Uh, and if I don't know, guess what, y'all? I'm not afraid to say I don't know. I'm not one of those ministers that got to know everything because I don't know everything. Hey, oh, hey, cousin. Praise the Lord. Hey, Stokes. Oh, yeah, thank you. I am utilizing my coffee mug, my tea mug, my mug. Thank you. It's got Pastor B on it. April Stokes, y'all. She made me and my wife a beautiful basket, gift basket for our second year anniversary. First year anniversary. Was it second first? Yeah, first year anniversary. Hey, Brown. Oh, man, you in help, Sabah. Praise the Lord. Hello, Mom. April, you made me, us one and you didn't get one. Hey, Eileen. Hey, sis. How are y'all doing? Pray all is well. Listen, let's let's spend some time in some QA. Um, I think this is what a lot of pastors ought to do more often. Uh, sometimes we get caught up in our presentation of God's word and and we don't allow, uh, at least I I do. Uh, you come to one of my services. Either Sunday morning or Bible study when we get started back before the COVID-19 shelter in place. Uh, what's the topic? Oh, there's no topic. There's no topic. This is regular Q&A. You know what I'm on? Okay. All right. I see what's going on. All right. So uh, I'm going to ask some questions. And for the person that answers it first, I will send you, I will, I will message you and I will send you a gift. All right. Since y'all don't have no questions for me, I have some questions for you. How about that? Okay. Since you don't have any questions for me, 
I have some questions for you. All right, so the first question I'm going to ask is, who can tell me how many books are in the Old Testament? How many books of the Bible are in the Old Testament? And whoever answers first, I give you a prize. How many books are in the Old Testament? <laughs> See, y'all don't have any questions for me. I have some questions for you. How many books of Scripture of the Bible are in the Old Testament? Whoever answers first, I promise you, I will message you. Nope, wrong, Strawbridge. <laughs> it's a total of 66 books in the Bible. How many are in the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. This is Q&A time. If you don't have any questions for me, I have some questions for y'all. How many books of scripture are in the Old Testament? Uh, Strawbridge, good job, man. Good job. There are 66 books in the Bible. How many are in the Old Testament? Since y'all don't have any questions for me, I have some questions for y'all. Strawbridge. Nope, wrong again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, Stokes. I'm sorry, that's wrong. <laughs> How many, ooh, y'all. Oh my goodness. How many Old Testament, there's 66 books in the Bible. How many of those are in the Old Testament? There you go, Brown. Good job, Brown. <laughs> All right, Brown, you win that one. All right, I will message you and I'll send you a good gift. <laughs> All right, anybody got any questions? Anybody got any questions for me? This is Q&A time with Pastor Nobles. If you don't have any questions for me, I have some questions for you. All right? Okay. All right. Oh, explain. There you go. Okay, mom, my mom trying to get us out of this. Explain Matthew 24 and 16. Let's, let's go to Matthew 24 and 16. <laughs> oh, where's your proof? <laughs> explain Matthew 24 and 16. Y'all, let's go to Matthew 24 and 16. All right, Matthew 24 and 16. My mom asked a question. Explain that, Matthew 24 and 16. Jesus was talking. Jesus was talking to his disciples uh, before his departure, Matthew 24 and 16. And, he, and it reads, Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Then, let, is that it, mom? Is that it, Matthew 24 and 16? Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Uh, if that's your question, mom, uh, please, uh, give me a thumbs up or something. My mom asked, explain Matthew 24 and 16. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm on Facebook and band. All right. Matthew 24 and 16. Is that, mom, that it, that it, is that your question, mom? All right, so in Matthew 24, 16, it said, Then let them which be which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Actually, uh, Jesus was talking to his disciples about some things that was going to occur uh, in the tribulation period. Let's look at verse number 15. When ye therefore she see, shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever read let him understand it. Uh, when Daniel spoke of the abomination of desolation, he was actually talking about the Antichrist. Uh, and the Antichrist, uh, during the tribulation period, uh, the first three and a half years, he's going to present himself as the Messiah. Uh, and he's going to, he's going to, he's going to be in the holy place. Uh, he's going to be in the temple, uh, because he's going to set himself up as God. And, uh, the first three and a half years of the tribulation period, he is going to present himself as the Messiah, the ones the Jews was waiting on. Then the last three and a half years, uh, he's going to deceive the Jews. 
So when it says, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. The tribulation period, mom, that is talking about a time in the tribulation period. He says, them that are in Judea, not America, in Judea. Everything about the tribulation period after the rapture of the church is God is dealing with the nation of Israel. So in Matthew 24 and 16, what it says is, whoever is in there, let them flee to the mountains. Let them hide themselves because the Antichrist is going to deceive them. He's going to set himself up as their Messiah. The first three and a half years is going to be peace. In the last three and a half years, he's going to turn on them. So in Matthew 24 and 16, it says, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. That's talking about those Jews, those Israel, those Israel, those Israelites who are alive at that time during the tribulation period when the Antichrist sit as the temple like he, Jesus Christ. Uh, and then he, he warns them, let them flee to the mountains because the abomination of desolation in Daniel is actually talking about the Antichrist. So Christ was telling his disciples that in the tribulation period, uh, those that be in Judea, let them flee to the mountains because the Antichrist is going to set himself up as God. So that's the understanding of that scripture. Go somewhere hide because uh, because the Antichrist, the person who's going to set himself up as Jesus Christ in the temple. Uh, that right there, see, and that's the, that's the key, y'all. This is the time of the Gentiles. Uh, the tribulation period is solely dealing with the nation of Israel. That's why this is the time right now where we're living here is the time that Gentiles, we get our lives right with God. So when the rapture take place, right now his focus is not on Jews. He's, his nation, Israel, his focus is on the Gentiles. So this is the time of the Gentiles. But when the rapture take place and the tribulation, then that's when all the focus is going to be towards uh, the nation of Israel, uh, which is present day in the Middle East. All right? All right, this is Q&A with Pastor Novels. Those of you that just came on, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, how are you doing? Greet me. Uh, if you have any questions uh, that you want to ask me at this time, you may ask. Or if you, you see a scripture, you're saying, hey, what does this mean? If I don't know, I'm going to tell you I don't know. If, uh, if you're going through something, you're saying, hey, what does the word of God have to say about it? Then let me know. All right, if you don't have any questions, then I have some questions for you. According to Galatians chapter 5, how many fruit of the Spirit are there? How many fruit of the Spirit are there? Whoever answers first, I will PM you and I will give you a gift. This is Q. <laughs> uh, now that's Ariel. Ariel, no, it's not 14. According to Galatians chapter number 5, how many fruit of the Spirit are there? All right, since y'all don't have any questions for me, and this is Q&A with Pastor Nobles. Uh, all right, Kat, J Jamal Jones. All right, Sister Nobles, good job. Good job. Genesis, it is not 12. According to Galatians chapter 5, verse number 22, there are nine fruit of the Spirit. So good job. Good job. So Sister Nobles, all right, that's your chance. All right, Brown, that's your chance. All right, this is Q&A. This is Q&A with Pastor Nobles. So I want to open it up. Walter, no, there's not three fruit of the Spirit. There's nine fruit of the Spirit. Okay. Anybody have any questions for me? Because I got some questions for y'all. What do I win? I'll send that to you, Sister Nobles. I'll pass that over to you uh, tomorrow. All right. This is Q&A with Pastor Nobles. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Brown, it's not 12. It's nine fruit of the Spirit. Oh, y'all, I, oh, uh oh, okay. All right, here's the next question. The next question. Mm -mm, no faith, in and not six is nine. According to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, how many gifts of the Spirit are there? All right, Brown, you, you can, if you've, if you've answered the question and got it right, you cannot participate anymore. So according to Galatians, according to 1 Corinthians, Chapter number 12, how many gifts of the Spirit are there? Since y'all don't want to ask me any, this is Q&A with Pastor Nobles. Since y'all don't have any questions for me, I have some questions for y'all. 
And if you get if you get the answer right, I will p message you and I will send you a small gift. All right. Who's going to answer first? According to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, how many gifts of the Spirit are there? <laughs> Everybody turning to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and counting. I don't believe this, y'all. Uh-uh. <laughs> Genesis. Nope. Wrong. <laughs> it is not seven. Gen Genesis is on band. So many of y'all don't see Genesis. Stokes, no, nope, it's not seven gifts of the spirit. Try again. According to Ron Walton. <laughs> oh, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Y'all, as y'all come on, say hello. This is Q&A with Pastor Nobles. And, and since, Brown, you can't answer again. And no, it's not 10. Uh, since uh, since y'all don't have any questions for me, I have some questions for y'all. All right, Faith. Good job, Royal Faith. All right, there you go. It is nine. It is nine. It is nine. It is nine. Um, uh, gifts of of the Spirit. All right. Hey, John. Let's see here. In Ephesians one verse number three. Per, right. Oh, I love that. Paul writes, "All praise to God, the Father, and Lord Jesus Christ." who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. My question is, what are those spiritual blessings that he is referring to? All right, that's a good question. That's a good question. Let's go, all go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3. Ephesians chapter number 1, verse number 3. That's a very good question. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3. All right. I guess y'all got tired of me asking questions. So Ephesians chapter one, verse number three, it reads as this. Those of you, uh, all right, Kathy, I answered that question in a few minutes. Explain me no call, but few are chosen. Uh, once God called you, what disqualifies you not to be chosen? That's a good one. So Ephesians, John Norman acts in Ephesians, one verse number three. This is Q and A uh, with Pastor Nobles, uh, and so thank y'all for joining me. Just want to spend some time. Normally, I start my Bible study time in fifteen minutes, and so Ephesians chapter one, verse number three, Paul writes to the church at Ephesus: "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us." That's interesting because that's past tense. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Y'all got it? Y'all got it? Y'all got it? Uh, John, um, I guess you are reading from the new KJV, but I read from the KJV. So the question is, what are those spiritual blessings he is referring to now I'm going to assume that you're asking is there something specific uh, because I think in, in y'all and I'm gonna add another scripture to this uh, we always also include that scripture in Philippians my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory um, I think uh, uh, my my understanding of that scripture is not specifically uh, what is those blessings uh but where they emanate from uh spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms um when i think of that scripture as i study it you know because we want to when we look at things like that we want to be specific okay what is that spiritual blessing that's 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 coming from the heavenly realm uh i think the focus what paul uh is is focusing on uh is uh the fact that uh, not as what rather than uh, where it is emanating from. So everything that everything for the child of God. And notice that in verse number five, having predestined us according to the adoption, uh, according as he has chosen us in him, watch this, before the foundation of the world, here it is, that we should be holy and we're like without blame before him in love. When I read that, there's two things that come to mind for me. Uh, that uh, that is 
the source of our blessings, the source, the source of, of, of what God gives us as the child of God, and, and this is good, we have to first uh we have to first look at it as number one, our source is our source is is not emanating from anything on earth. The resource is, but the source, everything that comes into the child of God's life, we're trying to answer the question in Ephesians 1 and 3 about what are those spiritual blessings. And one of the things that he said has, has in verse number 4, according as he has chosen for us before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blemish. What I think is that that spiritual blessing that comes from the heavenly realm, I associate it with salvation. Because it, it says it mentions it's chosen before us, before the foundation of this world, all right, uh, and that we should be holy and what we that what blame before Him in love. So whatever this blessing is, is emanating from heavenly places, a heavenly place that means from God, all right, uh, not earthly, not earthly. That's that's a good term, not earthly. And then thirdly. Uh, secondly, uh, that it has to do something that whatever is in, whatever it is, it's going to cause us to be without blemish and it's going to cause us to live a life of holiness. So what I believe is that spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm is that opportunity to receive uh, the Holy Spirit within the child of God's life. That's what I believe that is. Uh, because it says that you're going to be holy and without blame. Whatever it is, it's going to cause you to live a life of righteousness and holiness. And it was chosen to us before the foundation of his world. So what I think it is, that blessing that's come from the heavenly realm that was chosen, I believe the, 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 the blessing, the right to come in and be a part of the body of Christ. That's what I really believe that scripture is applying. And a lot of times when we see scriptures like that, John, and I'm glad you brought it up, we try to identify specifics, but, uh, but I, I just, cause it's, it's heavenly, it's spiritual. You got that? It's spiritual and it's going to cause us to be without blemish and holiness. What I believe is, uh, is that right to come into the body of Christ, uh, to be filled. And what he said is hath blessed past tense. So Paul is talking to two. That's good. Talk. Paul is talking to spiritual born spirit feel born again believers oh my goodness paul is talking that to those individuals who have been spirit filled and who are born again yeah so i believe that spiritual blessing is the right the 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 right the 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 access to the holy spirit as a born again believer yeah so I hope that help help you. I hope that that's that's what I believe. That's what I believe. Um, did I help you, John? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Okay. Uh, my wife says, "Explain. Many are called, but few are chosen. Once God calls you, what disqualifies to not be chosen?" Uh, I'm assuming that you're talking about it in scripture, uh, maybe in the Gospels that He said, "Many are called, but few are chosen." Um. In in the gladiator times, a lot of individuals and and we mistakenly utilize this scripture uh, for ministry calling. All right, let me say that uh, we mistakenly utilize this scripture that scripture for ministry calling, but it's not talking about ministry calling. It's actually talking about um, uh, called into the kingdom. And so, um, during the gladiator times. Uh, many people were called uh, to be a gladiator, to try out to be a gladiator. Uh, but only few, uh, when they got there, met the qualifications to actually uh, be a gladiator. So many were called to the race. Many were called to the competition, but only few were chosen. Uh, I was trying to pull up uh, the the Christian... Uh, Christian uh, uh, revised version of that 
Uh, but that scripture mean, I think we mistaken that scripture. Men are called, but few are chosen. When it comes down to ministry, being called into one of the fivefold ministry gifts. But that's that's not it. That scripture applies to many have the choice to come and walk with Christ. Many have the choice to come and walk in this kingdom walk. But very few make the choice or are chosen. All right. Many are called. Many are called to inherit eternal life, but very few are chosen actually um, uh, do what's, what it takes in order to, to obtain eternal life. I'm trying to just think of the words because I know there's many individuals here that are on different levels in terms of scriptural. Um, so that's my answer. And the second part is what disqualifies uh, to not be chosen. Um, I guess... You know, because of the, the etymology of that scripture, um, the background of the scripture and context, uh, there's something about being being called to compete and whether or not you make the sacrifices. Jesus was actually in a discourse about discipleship. And a lot of us are called to be disciples, but not all of us are willing to uh, sacrifice what it takes to be a disciple. So many are called, but few are actually chosen to actually be a disciple of Christ because guess what? They do not want to sacrifice. You remember, uh, you remember the, 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 the fellow that came to Jesus and said, you know, I did this and I did that. And Jesus said, you know what? Go back, go back and take care of this. And he'd never walk with Jesus anymore. One of them saying, Hey, let, let me go bury my, my relative. You know, I, I want to, I want to be a part, but I got something to do. Jesus said, uh, uh let the dead bury the dead. Another one said, listen, I, I'm throwing a party at the house. I got some guests. Hey, let me put this discipleship in this discipleship calling on hold. And then I come to you once I throw the party. Jesus said, you know what? You know what? You are not even worthy. And somebody came to him and said, listen, I done sold this. I done sold this. I done did this to be a disciple. He said, the foxes have hold, the birds have nested, but the son of man have nowhere to lay his head. What he was telling him is, with this walk, you may go lack, lacking. So what disqualifies one not to be chosen? Uh, your ability and your, your, your capacity to make sacrifices. And you don't see that uh, in this day and time. People want to, they say they want to be a disciple, but they're not willing to give up some things to walk with Christ. Did I help you? Y'all just trying to keep me from answering, asking y'all some questions. Uh, this is question and answer with Pastor Nobles. All right, y'all just got a few more minutes left until I get into my personal Bible study time. All right, all right. So those of you, I got another question. Got another question. Got another question. Got another question. Since y'all don't want to ask me any questions, I'm going to ask you uh, some questions. Here it is. Uh, the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch. Or the law of Moses is considered what books of the Bible? The Pentateuch or the law of Moses are considered what books of the Bible? Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, I get that April. Y'all just don't want me to ask y'all some questions. Jesus said this to his disciples as when he was resurrected. The Bible says, Oh, uh, Ariel, the first five books, Ariel is on band. The first five books, yes, area is called the Law of Moses. Yeah, you you've been under my teaching. All right, so explain Second Chronicles six and twenty eight. Oh my goodness, we're going to the Old Testament. Oh my goodness, Second Chronicles six and twenty eight. Let's see what that has to say. Second Chronicles six and twenty eight. Second Chronicles, yes, six and twenty-eight. All right. If there be dearth in the land, if there be pestilence, if there be blasting or mildew or locusts or caterpillars, if there if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, what's what so what whatsoever sore or what so sickness there be? Second Chronicles six and twenty-eight. That's correct. Six and twenty-eight. What specifically, uh, April, you, you wanted to know about this scripture? 
Second Chronicles 6 and 28. What specifically, April, are you asking about Second Chronicles 6 and 28? All right. All right. Continue verse 1. Okay. Then what prayer or what supplication soever shall be made of any man of all thy people Israel, when everyone shall know this one sore and his own grief and shall spread forth his hand in his house, then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place uh, and forgive and render to every man according to all his ways, whoever heart thou knowest, that thou knowest all the hearts of children of men, that they may fear thee to walk in thy ways so long as thou live in the land which thou gavest our father. Let me tell y'all this. Let me tell y'all this. Uh, Second Chronicles, good God of mine. Second Chronicles, uh, you know, I was telling y'all, I was telling you that when you when you look at a passage of scripture, you need to, you need to, you need to ask a couple of things. Number one, who is talking? Who is he talking to? And why is he talking and what's going on? Uh, Second Chronicles uh, deals a lot with uh, Solomon after he had completed uh, the temple. They completed the temple and he was praying. Uh, he was. It was part of Second Chronicles 6 and 28. Is actually through verse number 34, 31. That's what April Stokes asked. Uh, what, what does that mean? The temple Solomon had been given charge by God to build the temple. Uh, David, his father, uh, was not given that right by God, but Solomon was. And so after the temple had been built, Solomon begins now to consecrate the temple back unto God. And in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter number 6, uh, beginning at actually verse number 12, he begins to pray to God. My goodness, this is good. This is good because it, it shows you uh, humility in prayer. And I think that if we go study the prayers and scriptures, uh, I believe our prayers will have more, uh, let me say this, will have more validity uh, because we see these men uh, in the Old Testament, uh, the Holy Spirit coming upon them. We have the privilege of the Holy Spirit within inside of us. But in 2 Chronicles chapter number 6, Verse number 28 through verse number 34. What Solomon was praying is that basically in, 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 in short, whatever happens, regardless of what's going on in the land, regardless of what's going on in the world outside this temple, whether it be famine, whether it be pestilence, whether there be sword, whether there be sickness, uh, what he wanted was he made, he was praying, golly, he was praying a prayer of dedication. He was saying, regardless of what's going on outside this house, let this place be dedicated and holy and sanctified unto you. So the language he was using was the language in those times, the things they experienced. And so, and so it shows you that regardless of what's going on in the world, outside the body, outside the church, we must maintain sanctification. We must maintain dedication. We must maintain some type of separate, some type of awe of God. So what, in short, what Solomon was praying was that, you know, regardless of what's going on in the world, let your presence stay with us. And, and you know what? You know what? Can I be honest? You know, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 goes along with that prayer. But what was happening in April was Solomon was dedicating the temple and the temple, the temple uh, uh, furniture back unto God. And what he was saying is, you know what? I don't care what's going on outside of here. Lord, maintain your presence in this house. You know what we need to do? When these four, when the four walls of the church open back up, I don't care what's going on. Maintain your presence in this house. My goodness. So if we look at prayers like that, I love reading prayers because those men and those women, when they prayed, you felt the awesomeness. What we ought to be saying, God, you know what? Yes, the you do your work with Corona. You will, you will have your way, but maintain your presence in my life. Yeah, 
So April, that's 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 the answer to your question. Uh, there's nothing specific, but what he was saying is he was he was he was making a prayer of dedication, uh, and he was saying regardless of what's going on out his side of here, God, please maintain your presence. All right, that's good, man. I like this. I like this. All right, all right. All right, so those of you, this is question and answer with Pastor Nobles. Hey, uh, Thomas, nice to see you. Pray all is well. Pray all is well. This is Q&A with Pastor Nobles. Just want to get on uh, and just make my gift available uh, to individuals. Uh, yes, maintain your presence in my life. And he was dedicating the temple. And guess what? Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, yes, God, maintain your presence. I don't care. I don't care what's going on with Corona and Rona. God, maintain your presence. Don't you remove your presence. If you have to deal with the world, if you have to send pestilence, if you have to send famine, Lord, don't remove your presence from this, from my life, from this temple. That's what Paul, that's what he was saying. All right, listen. All right, are there, one more question. One more question. One more question. I'll tell you what. Uh, according to Galatians chapter number five, hey, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. Hey, I want to see y'all. I want to see you in the Mister Thomas. Uh, it should be Mister by now. I hope it is. Uh, but that's good. All is well. All is well. That's good thing. All right. According to Galatians chapter number five, y'all, uh, it mentions uh, nine fruit of the spirit. How many works of the flesh is mentioned in Galatians chapter number five? So this Q&A with Pastor Nobles, y'all ask me some questions, I ask you some questions. And those of you that answer it right, guess what I do? I PM you and I send you a little gift. Galatians uh, chapter number five. Galatians chapter number five. How many works of the flesh are mentioned in Galatians chapter number five, y'all? Y'all know where the works of the flesh are mentioned in Galatians? You know, when I came up, uh, when I got saved and gave my life to the Lord, I was a criminal justice student at Albany State. And you know, I was just God, I was just glad that God delivered me. Again, all right, Galatians chapter number five, how many works of the flesh? In chapter number five, he mentions fruit of the spirit. But in Galatians chapter number five, how many works of the flesh are mentioned? Watch this, I bet somebody gonna go count them. You know, and I was saying that these are some of the things when I got saved, a college student at Albany State College. Uh, I got saved. God filled me with his spirit at 21. And I vowed that as many hours I put in the criminal justice books, I was going to put in the word of God. And these are some of the things that uh, when I went to Christian education, Sunday school and Bible study, my pastor would, would teach. And then he would come back and ask us uh, because what you learn is, you learn, once you learn these things, you know that if somebody have a problem with them or you need to minister, then that's where you go. Uh, Miss <laughs> Nobles, 16, mm, you close, but no, 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 mom. Not 16 works of the flesh. How many works of the flesh are there in Galatians chapter number five? You know what? You know what? That's good, Ma. That's a very close. So I'm going to give you that one. I'm going to give you that one. That's my mom, y'all. There are 17 works of the flesh mentioned in Galatians chapter number 5, uh, verse number 22. So I'm going to give it, listen, I'm going to give that to my mom because that's good. That's close. And my mom is, uh, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. There's 17 works of the flesh. All right, Ms. Nobles, you got that one. You got that one. All right, any other questions before I go into my own personal Bible study time? Y'all, did y'all enjoy this? Did y'all enjoy this? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Lady V. <laughs> I had to give it to my mom. That was good. That was good. Did y'all enjoy this time? All right, I'm just doing some Q&A. I'm just doing some Q&A. Oops, I got a question. I just came up with another question. I just came up with another question to ask y'all since y'all are not going to ask me any questions. Yeah, I had to give it to my mom, Stokes. Good job. <laughs> All right, another question. Hey, woman of God. Hey, uh, prophetess Tamara Randolph. Hey, 
How are you doing? Hey, Kevin Brown. All right. So y'all want another question? Uh, yeah, it was 17 Stokes, but my mom said 16 and I know she wear glasses. So she probably counted 17. So I'm going to give that to her. All right. So let me ask y'all this. According to Ephesians uh, chapter number. Okay. Nope. Where in scripture, where in scripture does it talks about the, f all right, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, let me see, I'm going to have to qualify, I'm going to have to disqualify some of y'all, because y'all probably going to know this one. Uh, where in scripture, where in scripture, tell you what, where in scripture does it talks about uh, the, the tower the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel. Where in Scripture does it talk about the Tower of Babel? Let's let's see. Let's see. Where in Scripture does it, since y'all don't want to ask me any questions, then I'm going to ask you some questions. Where in Scripture does it talk about the Tower of Babel? Where God in Babel, that's where we get the word uh, babbling, because God confounded people's languages. And it actually shows you, if you read that 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 chapter, and I ain't gonna tell you what book uh, and chapter, but if you read it, you will understand. Uh, so, uh, you got to be more specific than that, Sister Nobles, and you can't answer no more. Genesis, Galatians, Genesis eleven and one through nine. Let me see it, Genesis, Genesis eleven one through nine. That somebody, somebody cheating, somebody cheating. All right, Genesis, good job. Genesis 11, 1 through 9. Area, uh, Genesis 11, 1 through 9, it talks about the Tower of Babel. Let me show you, if y'all go back and read that, it will show you uh, the power of people working together. These people were so focused on building a tower to heaven that God had to tell them, you know what? These people have become as one that, that nothing is impossible to them because they're working together. It also shows you what happens when you have a group of individuals that are working together and God had to confound their languages. Actually, it was at the Tower of Babel where we get all the, the languages from, uh, where God divided the languages. Uh, and so it was there. All right, listen, y'all. It's been great. It's been great. How many of y'all uh, enjoyed this uh, question and answer time? You know, my personal Bible study begins at 930. So y'all must, I must really love y'all that I will allow y'all to interrupt my personal Bible study. But what I wanted to do is come on. Those of you that's just joining, this was Q&A with Pastor Nobles. Uh, what I wanted to do was just come on and just answer any questions. What I'm finding out is a lot of individuals have questions that we as men and women of God ought to we ought to have an answer. As a matter of fact, uh, the scripture uh, admonish us. Do I know everything? No. And if I don't know, I would tell you. Uh, but, you know, I just, I just, you know, God just have blessed me. All right. I did. I will be ready next week. Okay. All right. April, April you got another question? If you do, say it. Because uh, y'all already 15 minutes into my own personal Bible study time. I also, it's... It's by asking questions, y'all, that actually activate the gifts. I was saying this last Sunday. Activate the gift of your pastor. And so if you are if you have a pastor and they allow for question and answer, I don't know why they not they shouldn't, but, you know, ask those questions because there are a lot of times, y'all, uh, we, we, we have a presentation, what we think is God, uh, but it may not be mean the need. And at Greater Believers Worship Center, I don't want you leaving without me giving you the word of God in terms of what you need. Because, and let me tell y'all this, this is good because a lot of times we won't admit to it, but a lot of times we wonder two things. Number one, the word that we have been given to present, whether or not it's God. And number two, whether or not it is just for us or the people. Now for me, uh, people want to know where, how you come up with what, well, you know, the simple thing is, and I know people say pray and God will give you a word. Okay. But majority of the times I'm ministering 
uh, to my people what I am going through. All right. Why? Because the husbandman, the person that labors is the first partaker. So a lot of times the things that we are ministering, you know, those messages that that the that the, the members say, oh, that was anointed. Oh, that was good. A lot of times because that is coming out of something that I'm walking through myself. So people are able to identify with it. That's why I don't have I don't I, I don't understand how individuals can know uh, what they are going to be ministering six months from now. I now I haven't been given that gift <laughs> to know a lot of times. And those of you who are women, uh, preachers and ministers of the gospel, I've had times where I thought I was going to present something. And when I step up to speak, God just, he just changed it because the, that ain't what the people needed. A lot of times I've ministered things that uh, minister more to me than to the people. There you go. You right about that, Thomas. You right about that. When all is said and done, we got to continue to uh, read people outside, reach God's people outside of the church. Yes. And this is why I'm doing this now. You know, there are a lot of things that doing this, I know doing this shelter in place that, uh, that we're finding out who's, who's real and who's not. Uh, we're also finding out for as men and women of God, some things that we thought uh, was necessary in order to preach this, in order to minister, that ain't. And what I'm seeing, there's a lot of things that I'm taking note, especially those that are uh, part of Greater Believers Worship Center. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that, uh, Thomas. When all said and done, we got to continue to reach God's people. I saw the walls of the church. I'm telling you, that is true. That is true. You know, one of the things I started doing uh, last summer before it got hot, every fourth Sunday, I was out. There's an apartment complex near my church. We was right there in the midst of it, preaching and teaching. As a matter of fact, uh, individuals were added to the church, uh, the church building, uh, based on that. So you are correct. Uh, so we're coming up. I hate to use it non-conventional, but a lot of us seeing... Uh, as pastors, we're seeing, we're learning some things that a lot of things we set up uh, was set up for convenience. Uh, and I think what's going to happen, y'all, in my closing, I got to go in my closing. Uh, that's why I'm going back to questioning. That's why you, that's why I'm doing this question and answer, because we got to go back to the bare root of the basics. What is it to know revelations and get all this high revelation when people don't understand the basis of this word wall. I'm going back to 095 Bible. You know, what are the fruit of the spirit? What are the works of the flesh? You know, how many books of the Bible? How many books are in the Old Testament? How many books in the New Testament? How many books of the law are in the Old Testament? How many major and minor prophets? Those are some of the things that I was taught when I got first got saved. And now I see the results of it because what you see now, what y'all hear now is the result of studying. That time of study, I used to be up at three and four o'clock in the morning as a young college student, you know, as God was giving it to me. And I see now, now individuals, most individuals don't know that there is no book of Noah in the canon of the scriptures in this Bible. I remember I stood up one Sunday. I said, now I tested the people. <laughs> I guess that's, I said, turn to the book of Noah. And I just waited and people were actually looking for the book of Noah. You know why? We need to go back to basics. And I say this. You cannot feed a baby steak. And what's going to happen, that baby is going to choke. What we have, what we're guilty of doing is feeding individuals who were bread and milk of the word steak and they choke. I just want to... Yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, one of the things is, uh, Thomas, church, the, 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 there's only four times the word church is mentioned in scripture. And two things. Number one, it represented church coming from a word ecclesia, those that are called out from the world. And then secondly, those that are 
part of the body of Christ. Uh, and and, and y'all listen, the churches, the acts, those, those people, those members of the body met in houses. They were meeting in four steeples and they were meeting in houses. God was pouring out his spirit in houses. That shows us something. They had house churches. So the church in and of itself is a spiritual organism. Now, should we have a place where we come together in fellowship and be encouraged and be edified? Uh, yes. Uh, you know, uh, man, I, I can I can really get into that one. Even with spiritual gifts. Your spiritual gifts are for the edification of the body. Spiritual gifts are... I'm finna get in trouble now. Spiritual gifts are for the edification of the body. That's all I'm gonna say about it. All right, listen. Y'all, y'all trying to keep me on here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask another question y'all keep playing. All right, so y'all, we'll see y'all tomorrow. Uh, I'll be back here at seven. Uh, we're gonna continue uh, our teaching series, uh, The Power of Endurance. The Power of Endurance. And we're gonna be coming from Hebrews chapter 12, verse number one and two. Hebrews 12 and 1 and 2. If you want to know the, the third part of power endurance, I'm going to show you the ultimate, the ultimate example of endurance during the crisis was Christ. And we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 1 and 2. I'll be on here uh, at 6.50. Our Bible study begin at 7, 7 o'clock. Y'all listen. The power of endurance, chapter number 3. Uh, part, uh, part 3, we're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 2. Hey, join us. Hey, listen, I love y'all. I had fun. I enjoyed this. Now, I, I know there's some pastors, there's some ministers that, hey, they, they, have a, they have a problem with this, but I don't have a problem with people asking me questions. And if I don't know, I don't know. And I tell you, but I guarantee you, I go back. The next time we get together, we're going to have an answer. All right, listen, love you, Stokes. Love you, Thomas. Uh, Kat, thank y'all for joining Ms. Wooten, I see you. Gaines, I see you. I see you, Mom. Marcus, I see you. I see you. Troutman, I see you. I see you. Randolph, now I see you. Now, oh, now you're going to, okay. Now you're going to join me now, huh? Yeah. Now I see you. I need to talk to you, uh, prophetess, when you get a chance. Give me a call. I want to talk with you. Uh, Kevin Brown, I see you. Uh, Aline, sister-in-law, brother. Brother, I see y'all. Genesis, Ari, y'all, thank, thank you for joining us. Listen, share this. Uh, tomorrow at seven o'clock, we'll be on here with our regular Bible study. Uh, thank y'all for joining me. God bless you. Listen, I pray that God give you some, those of us that are not working, those of us that's going to sleep. I pray that you get sweet, that, that, that you get some sleep, the sleep and, and some peace. You know what? Because a lot of individuals not sleeping. I went to the medicine line. I went to the vitamin area of several stores and they sold out of melatonin. And y'all know what that is. That's that's that that's that that's that that's that chemical in your body that gives you sleep. So I think a lot of people are suffering with sleep anxiety. I was just I was just looking for uh, some medicine, and I noticed that the melatonin was missing. And I said, "Dog, you know, so people are having problems sleeping." So I pray, I pray now uh, for each of every one of you that was on here. I pray that you got some out of it. I pray that you be edified. I pray that. You experience God's power. Uh, where his power is, there is presence. Where his presence is, there is his provision. Where his provision is, there is protection. And where all that is, you will find his purpose and plan. Listen, I love y'all. Hope to see y'all tomorrow. Um, back here at 7 o'clock. Love y'all.